Whoa, what a great, 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 great song, Green River, by uh, Credence Clearwater Revival. This is King Firehawk, Alive and Alive, and this is, uh, for depending on how you were listening to this show, it's either a brand new show, King Firehawk Talks, the Hall of Fame King Firehawk Hall of Fame with you now. Or it's part two of a show that I was doing that I uh, talked about the New York Rangers versus the Devils. You could check that out on all our platforms. On uh, first and foremost, YouTube. You could also go to uh, tweet us at Firehawk NJ OU812. Or you can listen to us on Apple iTunes. Spotify, or Speaker app. We're everywhere, all kinds and all places. Trying out a lot of new things. If we dusted the dust off the good old King Firehawk show, I guess now I got used to saying we're calling it the King Firehawks podcast world. King Firehawks podcast world. And uh, coming up now uh, is the rest of those of you who heard the uh, half show. And those of you who uh, did not, a normal show. And this is what we're calling, uh, why do I keep thinking what we are calling? This is a one-man damn band show. <laughs> Just me as I and he, and he is I, and I'm the one on the fly. Anyways, good old King Firehawk. So I'm going to now pick up where we left off and... uh it's all about the King Firehawk Hall of Fame, baby. So enjoy and uh, have a good time with it. And uh, here all we uh, go. Double your pleasure, double your fun. Uh, King Firehawk is here like a live loaded gun. All right, ready? Oh, by the way, the new Metallica album is awesome. We'll be reviewing that down the road. Just wanted you to know that. I love 72 seasons. It's awesome. All right. Now time for the Crowley Hall of Fame. The backstory. I love Donald Arthur Manley, one of the greatest baseball players to ever live. Glad that he's in the Yankee Hall of Fame, which is the most important thing. To have your number retired at Yankee Stadium to me. The fact he's not in that sham in Cooperstown is the reason why I created years ago my own Hall of Fame. To get into my King Firehawk Hall of Fame, you have to follow the following rules. One, you've had to play in your sport or wrestle or rock out or just be a hot babe uh, from 1972 on. So if you're like Brooks Robinson and played early in the 70s, which I'm a fan of, you're eligible for my Hall of Fame because I was on Earth during your timeline. So, but, you know, I can't put Mickey Mantle in my Hall of Fame because I wasn't alive when he was playing. Uh, same thing, I believe, uh, I think Joe Namath did play uh, in 1972. Or I had to look that up. But there are guys who just were legends that I'm well aware of. Can't be in the Hall of Fame because they didn't play on the day I was born to the day I am here now. That's one. Two, you have to be either retired or semi-retired. I can't, I can't retire you if you're a legend in the making. Uh, you have to that. Now, there's exceptions. Pro wrestlers mainly are the ones that uh, affect the exception here. As if you are somebody like Stone Cold or The Rock and you come back for a cup of coffee, wrestle a little bit, and then leave, you might, you know, you're eligible for the Hall of Fame because primarily... Your career in the wrestling business is less than part-time, and, and you've already established yourself, okay? Of course, when it comes to babes, some babes have done something great, and others are just still and always will be this hot chicks that uh, they put on a baseball card that I'm like, one day when I saw a Pam Anderson baseball card, I was like, oh, this is great. I can put Pam in my Hall of Fame, and she's there, of course. So, we've been doing this uh, for years. On the comments below, the first thing is I have a dilemma. Of all the people I ever retired, 
into the Firehawk Hall of Fame, which proudly is displayed in King Firehawk's man cave. So if you get in on the end with King Firehawk, you can see that. But we'll do a video show one day of it and uh, reveal all the members. And uh, down the road, I would like to do a thing where, you know, put in a member, play some audio, some clips of their history and uh and and put them in the hall of fame but right now it used to be i started off where i put 20 guys in the hall of fame for a few years then i went down to five got in each year and last year was the first year that i started i wanted to try something out and make it even more extra special i'm now down to where you know, we got uh, for the first couple of years, the initial 20, 40 people got in. Then we were doing five a year. Uh, and this goes back to early 2000s because the Hall of Fame, uh, to me, Don Manley should be there. It's not the Hall of Accounting and Stats, which they like to pretend and turn it into. Yes, obviously the stats are used to do, uh, you know, make you uh, stand out among your peers. But then there are guys with great stats that will never get in for steroids or because they didn't like you. It, it's just such bullshit. It should be a combination of stats and what you brought to the game. And Don Manley, man, what did he bring to the game? He was the game. He was the poster boy to he pretty much got hurt for Major League Baseball in that era. Everything was about Don Manley. He even was respected and loved. Put some respect on that name, yo, son, when he would travel out of town, very much like Jeter would have the respect of a lot of places he went to. Uh, Manley was the man. Everyone loved him. He was a great ambassador for the game. He played his ass off. Uh, he and, and forget it, man. He's just beyond loved in New York. Kills me that he's not part of the Yankee organization now. I would love him to manage the Yankees. But he's a bench coach in Toronto now. However, uh, for the intangibles and what he brought to the game of baseball uh, and what he meant to the game of baseball, that and the stats when he was healthy before he broke down and got hurt are enough to be in the Hall of Fame. But you don't want to be put in Cooperstown? Screw Cooperstown. You're in King Firehawk Town and you're there forever. Which now leads me to my dilemma from last year, as this man that we put in was, uh, first and foremost, on the first dream team, a great NBA player. More importantly, though, teamed with Diamond Dallas Page against Hulk Hogan uh, and Rodman. And I also believe, I think he, uh, Hogan and Jay, uh, uh, no, he didn't team with Jay Leno. So it was Hogan and Rodman versus Malone and DDP. And Carmelo made it to my Hall of Fame last year. And I have heard, I was listening to WFAN New York uh, sports station, Carton and Roberts once, and Carton was alluding to there's a well-known story that's kind of been kept in the dark, that Carmelo allegedly, uh, I don't know how true it is, is we don't fact check here on the King Firehawk show. Oh, here comes a freebie for you. <laughs> There you go. Souvenir. Let me take a swig of my Coors Light. Cheers to my drinking buddies in the Isle Tonga. Regardless of time, they drink their hooch, and so shall you. Stop saying it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Say, they're drinking on the Isle Tonga. Give me my hooch. Anyhow, anyway. Uh, so, uh, what was I saying? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, I know. Okay. Wait. Uh, oh, Hall of Fame. So, uh, the story allegedly is Carl Malone uh, uh, was, you know, messing around with a girl who was somewhere in the 13, 14, 15 age. I think knocked her up. And I think pretty much stopped paying attention to her or didn't live up to his responsibilities. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on the story. I'm researching it. If you know, put what you know in the comments below because I'm so curious. Because for that, I might be throwing a dude out of the Hall of Fame as I just 
you can't get into my Hall of Fame no matter who you are if you're underage, uh, uh, you know, banging girls. It's just not going to happen on King Firehawk's watch. So, as of now, it's only time in the history of my Hall of Fame. I don't care if you did steroids, drugs out your ass, drinking and driving and up in jail. But if you're banging uh, young girls, yeah, you're out. You're out. You can't be in the Firehawk Hall of Fame. That's just the way it is, was, and always shall be. So, investigation is launched. Which brings us to the inductee for 2023. And here is who it is, and here's why. Welcome to the King Firehawk Hall of Fame. Danica Patrick. Oh, my God, I could hear the people pissed off right now hearing that. Danica Patrick, why? Here's why. One, as a father of daughters, I like girl power. And I think uh, an inspiration is what Danica Patrick is. Because she's beautiful, cool, funny, great sense of humor, and can drive a NASCAR super-duper fast. I say this to you, even as a, a man. Like I always say, I, you know, I ain't no Fabio. But if I, if someone said in a sentence, boy, that King Firehawk, what a beautiful man, and he's a NASCAR driver. Bam, boom, holy shit, I signed up for that. King Firehawk is beautiful, and he drives fast. Wow. Let me have that. She did. She drove Formula One, wasn't bad at it, got into NASCAR, took a lot of shit for people who are, she got, she's only there because she's pretty. Look, you take the most beautiful woman you consider to be the most beautiful woman you've ever seen. Doesn't mean she could drive a NASCAR on the track. Danica Patrick could. Plus, I love the GoDaddy sponsor, love the GoDaddy hats, got all the GoDaddy swag. Being a dad of daughters and being like sort of like, uh, you know, a grizzly bear protecting uh, my little girlies. I, I love wearing a GoDaddy hat. And I, I just love the whole package of Danica Patrick. I love what she brought to, uh, to the NASCAR sport. I love the controversy and the annoyance of the people who uh, just uh, didn't think that she belonged there. She belonged there. She put eyes on the sport, did her best, uh, had a lot of competition out to screw her on the racetrack, made it tougher for her, yet uh, I thought she did a fair job considering. Is she the greatest NASCAR driver ever? No. Uh, if you own a NASCAR team, and uh, could you replace her with a better driver? Probably. But could you replace her, uh, that her, with someone who's going to make a lot of money for your team, be high profile, be a great ambassador, be a great person to represent the sport, be great for women and girls everywhere to achieve something in life, and as well as, uh, you know, just cross over. And, uh, you know, let's be honest, okay? As I said before, I would love to be a damn handsome, pretty uh, boy a uh, fast car rich uh, per, uh, dude in life. So uh, being a woman who's beautiful, again, fun, intelligent, and, and a NASCAR driver, Jesus. I mean, are we ordering off a menu? Dear God, make me this.